Okay, so we're gonna try and do a split screen today. I have to wait for Nancy to log in and then we're gonna split the screen so that, whoops. Split screen today. I have to wait for So that um, I can get her in. So once she's in, I can accept her and add her. Um, hi, Deb, so glad that you're here. Um, I will be in front of the camera as soon as Nancy gets online because I have to add her in first. Um, my lovely assistant for today will be Lynn. So Lynn, if you wouldn't mind keeping an eye here for when Nancy gets in and okay. then we'll add her in. Okay. Here's the... Oh, the sprayer. Yeah. The dog silencer. And you can see comments here. Yes. Uh, so, uh, today is my sister Nancy's birthday. Okay, this, wait a minute. Here. So, we're going to be doing one of her favorite oh, dishes. Oh, okay, never mind. It was up like that, and I couldn't yeah. see you. Oh, yeah, I put it up there so that we could see when Nancy pops in. Okay, uh, there's Lori. Hi, Lori. So, we're making one of Nancy's favorite dishes that she doesn't know how to make. It's one of my favorite dishes, too, and I haven't made it in, seriously, I can't begin to tell you how long. So as soon as Nancy's name pops up in there, I'm gonna go ahead and add her to the video. And hopefully, if everything works out all right, you're gonna see a split screen of me and my sister cooking together apart, because she is in Florida and I'm in Las Vegas. Um, we're gonna be doing a classic carbonara today. And like I said in the description, most places make it wrong. Um, if you watched the video from yesterday, I talked about the different kinds of pork that we could be using. Um, but also, most places do this as a, I swear to God, I'm not even kidding, a Alfredo with bacon and peas in it, and then they call it carbonara, and that is not a carbonara. So carbonara is really literally pasta, pork, and eggs. That's it. Well, there's cheese because it's Italian. So you gotta have cheese. So um, we're gonna be using a combination today of pecorino and parmesan. My parm is already grated, so I'll be able to take questions from you while you are grating your parmesan. My pecorino, I'm gonna grate fresh. Um, and we're gonna do half and half. You could do all of parm, all of pecorino, or half and half, or partial like I'm doing. Um, I don't know what I did with my drink. Let me go find it. Is Nancy there yet? Of no. course not. My God. No. She won't listen. So, um, one of the things that I always like to say at the beginning of all of my videos is this is a real house. This is my real kitchen. Um, we have real dogs that are definitely going to bark during this demo because I'm, I just got a text saying a delivery was on the way. So chances of them barking during this demo are probably 90%. So Lynn's got the squirt bottle to shut them up. Um, so uh, we're gonna be working with just a few ingredients today, but what's really important here is the technique. So I'm gonna teach you how to temper the eggs before you put them into the sauce, because the eggs and the cheese are going to become the sauce. It's that simple. I mean, it's just that easy. Um, you should have a heat safe measuring cup because we're going to take some of the pasta water because the pasta water also plays part in creating the sauce, the starch from that. And you should have some tongs that can go in the hot water and in the skillet. I gave you a pretty decent shopping list and I actually printed it out so I didn't forget anything and say, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you this. So I actually printed it out and so I didn't forget anything. I am going to dispense with the crushed chili flake today, but you could certainly add it if you want, and I will tell you at what point to add it. Um, Lynn, you don't mind crushed chili flake, do you? No. Oh, then I'll add it in. Please. Really? Okay. okay. So I got my crushed chili flake. I also didn't tell you to put black pepper on there, but I think it adds like an extra note of flavor, <clears throat> so um, it's definitely something that you can add in. It's no big deal. Okay, Sandy Wyndham and Laura Stedman Fulton is on, but your sister is not. 
Oh my God, Nancy is gonna die. I hope that her reason for being late is that she's either opening presents, eating cake, or drinking a cocktail, or all three. Um, so this is actually gonna be her dinner. We're at a weird time tonight because I said Nancy's in Florida. And this is going to be done at dinner time for her. So she's actually making her own dinner, her own birthday dinner. I believe that's my delivery. Yep. <laughs> like I said, we had a 90% chance of the dog barking. So actually, because we do have, that's cannoli, you guys, I'm sorry. She's the loudest in the on the planet. Because we do have a couple of minutes. I'm going to actually show you what is coming. <laughs> because I participate with a local co-op called Desert Bloom. If you are unfamiliar with them, you can just go to desertbloom.com and check them out. That's where my eggs came from. And Desert Bloom, every I choose every other week, but every other week they bring me a box of beautiful produce. I'm gonna actually show everybody what's in my box. Oh, wow, nice. There's beautiful stuff in here this time. Holy smokes, you guys. Some beautiful spicy arugula, some braising greens. Oh, and look at this. Mmm. It's fennel, very, very baby fennel bulbs. Uh, some gorgeous baby carrots, some really pretty spicy radishes. Okay, you guys, I just learned what this is. It's called bitter melon. And I, I've never seen one before in my life. Um, but it's really fun. And then uh, baby beets, some more basil, and a big ass zucchini. So there's a lot of really great stuff in here. So I'm really looking forward to playing with this. These fennel fronds, oh my God, they're so good. They are great as garnish on a lot of things. So we're gonna use the bulb and the garnish. Okay, I'm just gonna put this okay. behind me. Kim Spence. Hi, Kim Spence. And Shelly. Uh, Seldivar, sorry. Oh, sorry. hi, Shelly. She, Shelly uh, is an old friend of mine from Texas. Still no Nancy. Daddy. Oh, Nancy is going to die. Still no Nancy. So, you know what? Uh, while we're waiting for Nancy, what I'm going to tell you to do, if you are cooking along with me, is get your stock pot. Put about six quarts of water. I know normally you put a lot of water in there. Use a little bit less water than you normally would to boil your pasta because we want to we want it to be a little starchy. So um, use a little bit less water. It'll take a little bit longer time to cook, but um, it's going to yield itself in the starch department. So start your engines, please. Okay, Heather Cowan is on. Man, this is great. We got a lot of folks. Nancy is gonna die. No, Nancy. Okay, so we're gonna start without her because I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. When Nancy gets on, I'm gonna exit the camera for a minute and invite her to join us. Uh, in the meantime, let's get started. So, um, if you watched the video yesterday, I talked about the different kinds of pork that you could use um, and told you the difference between guanciale, pancetta, and bacon. I am using pancetta today. It is an uncured, uh, meaning there's no nitrates in it or nitrates in it, uh, pork that has been dry aged. And it's basically, it's a piece of skin, um, it's basically just pork belly that is seasoned and salted and then rolled like really tight and then tied and then it's allowed to dry in the refrigerator or curing room, whatever they have. In my case, when I made it, it was the refrigerator. And this one smells really good. It's got some black pepper and some rosemary in it, which I know is not Lori's favorite, but there's so little of it, you would never notice Lori. So before anybody asks, my shirt is from a company called Flavor Gallery. You spell flavor the way British do with a U, F-L-A-V-O-U-R. And they make all kinds of really fun uh, chef shirts, cooking shirts. I have one that says go fork yourself. I have a whole bunch of different ones. So you're going to take your pancetta or whatever and you're going to dice it. Now this is kind of thick. I mean, you can see it's an inch. So I'm going to actually slice it top to bottom because I don't want, you know, gigantic hunks of pork in there. And I'm going to make these 
Sister Tina is on. Hi, Sister Tina. So I'm glad you guys have all joined me. I know it's a weird time for a lot of you. So I really appreciate those of you who are taking the time out of your work day. Um, you probably needed a break, maybe, um, to join me. And for you East Coast and Midwest people, this is probably a really good time for you. All right, so we're just dicing it. So you'll see these are about half inch dice pieces. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do it. And I want you to turn on your skillet or your Dutch oven, whichever one that you're using. And remember, mine always has a, um, a fan because it's an induction burner. So you're gonna always hear that in the background. My sister's actually calling me and I'm not gonna be able to answer her. <laughs> Because I'm with you guys and I'm filming on the phone. Do you want me to decline it? Yes, decline it. <laughs> so, um, we've got this diced. And sometimes the skin on your pancetta is going to be a little tough. So, just... Uh, Make sure you cut all the way through it so you don't have two pieces hooked together. And that's bad, why? Well, because then it, it, you know, you'd have like one normal size piece and one gigantic piece. And that's bad, why? <laughs> so you're going to put your pancetta in the pan. It should be about medium heat because what you're gonna do is slowly render out the fat. And, um, we're going to slowly render out the fat. Um, okay, I, th I think this is probably Nancy, and yeah. she says it's under good for spooning. That's me calling her, and then it says tell her that I can't join as me because I'm an admin on the page. Oh, well, well. I did it yesterday. I don't know how we did it. But, all right, Nancy, you're not going to be on split screen then. Um, just pay attention and watch. Too bad you guys can't see my beautiful sister cooking on her birthday, which is hilarious, by the way. Okay, so Pecorino hmm, is a little bit more robust, I think, than Parmesan. And if I remember correctly, Pecorino is sheep's milk, where Parmesan is cow's milk. She says I'm going to use Walt's phone. Okay. And she's going to sign in as Walter? I don't know. She didn't say that. Okay. So if you see Walter Lawrence pop up, we'll just add quote okay. Walter. Okay. okay. So we're going to need about... I don't know, a half a cup or so of each cheese, which will be about two ounces of each. If you're using one, duh, obviously you're going to use four ounces. Um, my pond is already grated, and the grater that I'm using is a microplane, like always, because I just like their product. Um, and Karen Shalit is on. She just came on and wanted to know if she missed anything. Not really. You didn't miss much, Karen. I diced pancetta, which is in the pan, and we're rendering the fat off. And just give it a good stir every now and then, because you want it to get a little bit crispy, and you want to get as much of mm -hmm. the fat out of it as you can. And grate your pecorino, grate your parmesan, and have your water ready to boil. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to separate eggs. Now there are... I I'm sure your mother, my mother, everybody's mother, taught them how to use the shells to separate eggs. Sadly, that is not the best way to do it, okay? Your hands are the best way because a shell can actually pierce your yolk and then you end up with yolk in your white or white in your yolk and you don't want that. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try and do this the best way possible so you can really see it. You're gonna put your whites 
in the smaller of the two bowls. Now these beautiful eggs are from Desert Bloom, like that box that I just showed you. And my eggs happen to be at room temperature. Crap. Got it. Saved it. <laughs> um, so we, what we want in here are three yolks and two whole eggs. Save your whites for another purpose. Either make yourself a meringue or do a little souffle with them. But you see how when I did that, that all of the white ended up separate and this yolk is just by itself. There's no strings attached to it. Okay, Heather's got to go, but she'll watch for your recording so she can make it later tonight. Bye, Heather. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. All right, so we've got our eggs. We've got our egg whites separated. We'll save these for another purpose. I really think what we should do next time is a souffle. We should do a cheese souffle or a spinach souffle because it would show you what to do with those leftover egg whites. Or a chocolate souffle. I won't do sweet when. <laughs> oh, okay, that's right. I know that's what everybody wants to know how to make, but I think it's better to do the savory. So you're gonna beat these together. Make sure that they're really well beaten, that there's no um, strings of egg white in there, and you want to really get in there and get it done. Okay, so now we're going to add our cheeses to our eggs. And I'm just going to eyeball this parm. Now when you get Parmesan fresh uh, in a brick, uh, a lot of times, like especially if you're buying a big piece, you'll end up having a piece of rind left over when you get down and there's hardly anything left. Don't throw this out. You can either shove it in your food processor and grate it into like a, a powder, or what I like to do is I throw it into a braise or a soup or my tomato sauce. And it just gives a little bit of extra umami flavor to that because Parmesan is loaded with all of the things that make your mouth go happy, happy, joy, joy. So we're going to mix this in. And I'll sh once I get this incorporated, I'll show you what it should look like. Um, and it's going to be thick. And that's what, it's okay. It's supposed to. But you want to get it so that um, it's very well incorporated. It is uniform throughout. See, and it should look like that. Can you see it on the screen, Lynn? I, I, um, okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. It, There's we, a delay, we get I know. Delay. Yeah. <laughs> so Lynn was looking at the computer screen and um, the, the phone shows or something else. We're gonna put a couple of grinds of black pepper in here and beat those in. And now, you guys, it's pretty much a waiting game. We have to wait for our pancetta to get crispy. And we have to wait for our water to boil. So I am at your disposal right now to answer whatever questions you've got. Um, for those of you who want to know, the weather here in Vegas is friggin' beautiful right now. It is top-down, drive convertible weather. It is perfect. It's getting into the, you know, low 90s and it's dry as a bone, so it's really nice. Uh, I know in other parts of the country, you're starting to see the leaves change and I'm a little jealous, frankly. Okay, Good for Spooning just came on and said, ask her to repeat what's happened so far. That would be Nancy. Uh -huh. Okay, so, for those of you late joining us, we diced our pancetta about a half inch. It's in the pan, rendering the fat off and getting crispy over medium, medium high heat. We separated three eggs and combined yolk, those yolks with the two whole eggs. 
and both cheeses. So you should have grated your pecorino and pour your parmesan, and both of those are mixed into the eggs with a couple of grinds of black pepper. And not that you care, Nancy, but uh, I showed everybody what was in my produce box from the co-op. <laughs> um, so I talked about the different pastas that you could use for this in the demo yesterday, in the video yesterday. I have a love-hate relationship with angel hair, okay? It cooks really quick. It's really easy to use for a lot of things. But for this particular application, it's not a great choice. The, the strands are too thin to stand up to the thickness of this sauce, okay? So that's why I recommended getting yourself some fettuccine or a bucatini or um, I said mafalda yesterday, which are like little skinny ruffled lasagna noodles, like great big long ones, or the long fusilli, not the corkscrews from the box. Um, so it, those tend to hold on to the sauce a lot better. Uh, there's a great restaurant in Fort Lauderdale. We have one here too, uh, Steve Martirano's. And he does it with this pasta, and I don't know if it's pronounced pacchieri or pacchieri, but it's big, fat, round circles, but about this thick. So imagine a manicotti noodle cut into rings, and it's big like that, and he serves this sauce with that, and it's phenomenal. Um, if you want a great reference book, on macaroni, I'll show you one that is really fun. It's called The Geometry of Pasta. I hope I can find it. Oh, here it is. Okay, it's called The Geometry of Pasta. And basically it has recipes in it, but it shows you what the shapes look like. And then it tells you about the pasta itself, the history of that particular pasta, and what sauces work really well with it. Okay, so my pancetta is just about done, but my water is still not boiling because once these are both done, it moves really quickly. So you can see my pancetta is almost yeah. crispy. It smells great. Yeah, so you know the difference, like I said in the video yesterday, between pancetta and bacon is that they're both pork belly, but bacon is smoked. So if you've got bacon and you're using bacon in this dish, that's great, um, but it's gonna leave a little smoky taste to it, and I hope if you're using bacon that you did as I suggested, <coughs> okay. and went and got slab bacon from the deli and had them slice it pretty thick. Okay, Marion said, can I see her skillet inside, which, there you go, it? yep. And then Good for Spooning said, should it be crispy? Mine is nowhere near that. It's, it's going to get crispy, yes. You want it to be crispy because you, when you get it to be crispy, it's gonna render out all the fat and we're gonna pour off a good portion of that fat. We're gonna leave some of it in there um, just for the silkiness of it, but we're gonna pour off a good bit of it. I got my helper handle to help me hold that thing because it's hot. Yeah, it's not that hot because this is an induction burner. Man, what is taking this thing so damn long? I should have turned it on when we got here, Lynn. I know. Because I don't want to overcook the pan well, shot. I was going to say something, but yeah, okay, it, it's <laughs> <laughs> not my place. So mine is starting to get nice and brown. The fat's all rendering out. And like I said, we're going to pour off a good bit of this. Now you can use this fat from the pancetta like you would bacon grease. So if you like to use it in your cornbread, or you like to use it to saute liver, or um, you use it in your braising greens, you could totally do that with pancetta fat just like you would bacon grease. It's just really good animal fat. 
obviously this is not a good uh, recipe for vegetarians, vegans, or anyone who doesn't eat pork. <laughs> I apologized about that yesterday too. So we're just going to set this here with my little cute rebel chicken dish. I love those things. Oh, happy birthday, Nancy. Happy birthday to my sister, Nancy. She's my first sister. I have three of them and a brother, in case you were unaware of that. And Nancy's daughter, Erica, is my only godchild. And Nancy is 54 years old today. So there. <laughs> so no matter how old I get, She's always younger than me. And no matter how old she gets, I'm always first. Because I'm the firstborn. Man, my pancetta is looking really good. Uh, ask else. her to show me her eggs. Okay, so From here's the eggs. It's all really well incorporated. And it's going to look lumpy. It's going to look curdy because of the cheese that's in there. Oh, Shelly said, happy birthday, Nancy. Today is my mom's birthday, too. That's right. I forgot about that. Happy birthday, Shelly's mom. And Andrew Rogers says, pork belly fat makes everything better. That's true. It absolutely does. I am a big fan, like, you know, old school. I keep a mason jar in the refrigerator with all my bacon drippings in it. This one will be stored separately because this isn't smoked, so, but I'll still keep it. Um, but I use it when I'm gonna like make a pot roast. So instead of putting oil in the pan, I'll throw in some bacon grease and I'll sear my chuck roast in that. Uh, sometimes I'll use it and I'll toss potatoes in it and throw them in the air fryer. It gives it that bacony uh, fried taste. Goodness. What'd you say? Goodness. Goodness. <laughs> um, but you know, especially now, when there are so many food insecure people, you really shouldn't be wasting anything that can be used again. And we um, could totally use this. Marion says, my eggs are not that thick. Should I add more cheese? Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with adding more cheese. This, it'll only make your dish, your final dish cheesier. Now you'll notice there's no cream in this, like in Alfredo. There's no cream at all in this dish. And there shouldn't be. And I know a lot of um, lactose intolerant people can't handle like liquid or fluid dairy products, but they can handle the aged stuff for whatever reason. So this is a great dish for somebody who's lactose intolerant. Uh, Becca Lawrence says it's great for mustard greens. Yes, it is absolutely. Baking grease is absolutely great for mustard greens, collard greens, kale. Anything that makes kale taste better is a good thing. Because I'm not a good kale fan. Andrew Rogers says, I learned that from Janice. <laughs> Janice would be sister number two. And Tina, who we already said hello to, is sister number three. And Erica Reed is on and says hello. Erica is Nancy's daughter. And I'm glad that she is here as well. If she's in the house with Nancy, we could actually put her on the split screen so Nancy could be in front of her phone. But we don't know where Erica is at this moment. So um, what we're going to end up doing once the stupid water comes to a boil is we're going to cook our pasta and we're not going to throw it in a colander. We're actually going to pick that pasta up and drop it right in here. So what we're aiming for when we cook our pasta here <coughs> is to have it a couple of minutes shy of being completely cooked because it's going to cook more in here with the sauce. So if you cook it all the way through, you're gonna end up with mush. Oh, I don't want that, because that's disgusting. So, uh, my water's almost to a boil. And now remember what I said about boiling pasta. You want your water as salty as the ocean. So I just put in a good whopping mm -hmm. hunk. No, they don't need to see that. Okay. A good whopping hunk of uh, water into my, into a salt into my water. And we're just gonna wait for it to come to a full boil, and then we're gonna dunk our pasta in. Now, if you're using fresh pasta, uh, which if you are fortunate enough to have that, I'm thrilled for you. Um, um, Erica says, I'm watching mommy cook. 
Oh, she's at the house? That's what she says. Oh, wait a second. Hold the phone, guys. We're gonna see if we can add Erica in and she can film Nancy cooking. Okay. Let's see. she accepts it, then we should be able to see Nancy cooking side by side with me. If she ever accepts it. She declined. She declined. <laughs> I see how it is. <laughs> I see how it is. Okay. So my water is now boiling. I hope yours is. It took mine long enough to get here. And I'm just gonna put the whole pound of pasta in. Now if your bacon uh, or pancetta or guanciale got crisp already, you could do like I did and turn it down while we wait for our pasta to cook. Oh. Erica says, wait, invite me again. <laughs> and Good for Spooning says she's behind. And Nancy says she's behind. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Because I added Nancy as an editor to the page because I thought that she had to be uh, an editor for the split screen. But. All right. Okay. Connecting. There we go. Okay, do you see us right now? Yeah. Oh, good. Let me see what it looks like. I want to see well, what I'm doing. Eric, Eric is here. Hi, Erica. Okay, you got to oh. turn the phone so everybody can see mom. Hold on. I'm trying I'm to figure this out. Here we go. Mother. Are we cooking the pasta yet? It's a little pixelated, but. Sure. It's a little pixelated? Yeah. That's because Nancy's in that house. I don't know how to make them connect. Yeah. It can't be on the phone for a We might have to do it right now. We might have to end that if it doesn't get better. Becca Laura, it says an inside view of the chaos. The chaos. Um, yeah. Not on my end. Listen, how much of the how much of the grease do I have to drain off of that picture? I drained off the salad off. I said um, the tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of red pan. So the right thing is because of course I can't see it. Okay, so see how crispy it's nice and brown, but it's not black. Right. Let's just make a piece and try it. I it's firm and a little bit cheap. And it's soft. Slap it up with the soft. You can hear it up that. Mmm. Oh, and is Autumn there too? Yeah. Erica yes. just came. Right. We're photo bombing with with Fancy. And she has on. And, and Eric. And and Russell. Hi, Russell. Russell. Don't know his name. Okay, so so my pin my pin set it is all right. <laughs>
13. Can you, can you do me a favor and swing that computer to the so that I can see what you're doing? All right, I want to see your blood shot in, Nancy. Uh, I made her put a headset on. I can't do it. I can't do it. Nancy, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Not in the beats. I can't hear you in the beats. Erica, I can't hear her in the beats. It's not, it's not Bluetooth. No, my mouth isn't the way. When do I put the, um, the pasta is almost ready. Okay. Mine is too. So we're in good shape. <laughs> oh, where do you want them to go? Hold on. Be right back. We are just not going to do this again. So yeah, mine is still a little crunchy in the middle. I think it's because my gas can on my well, crap is interrupted. Right. Maybe it's Nancy uh, Pete. And then yes. yeah. it's all garbage. Yeah. You know what? We're gonna decline a little bit now. We're gonna take it out. So um, Get it out of Can we take it off the Wi-Fi? Yeah. I'm not on. Tell her we're going to sign out. We're just going to watch. Here, just tell her say we're going to sign off. Yeah, that's good. a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. I can't use headphones. I'll explain it a little. We're going to sign off. What's next? Okay, so are you signing out of there? Because I can't delete you for some reason. Okay, now somebody said can't no sound, can't hear anymore. At all? I don't know. Well, there's a delay, so they might not be able to hear me anymore. They can't hear me MC anymore for sure. No. So just no, they said they can't hear anymore. At all? Yeah, that's what they said. <clears throat> Karen said can't hear anymore. Laura said we can't hear anymore. Okay, you're back. Oh, thank okay. God. Okay, you're freaking me out there. It was right. the delay. It was the delay. Okay. So we're almost ready with our pasta. Let's just test it one more time. Perfect. So it's a little hard still in the middle. So what we're going to do is just using our tongs, put it right in. Don't worry if some of the pasta water gets in there with it, because like I said, we're going to end up using pasta water to temper our eggs and to help make the sauce. And 
yeah, it's going to be a little messy, but, you know, cooking sometimes is. It's not pretty. I mean, it's, you know, cooking is rarely as pretty or as clean or as perfect as you see on a cooking show because they have editing. This is all one camera, one shot. I don't edit it at all. When I was working with my friend Christine, she was like, you don't edit it? I'm like, no, I don't edit it. This um, is the way it is. Karen Shalita missed what kind of pasta are you using? I'm using fettuccine. Um, you could use anything that is uh, sturdy. Um, and I prefer a string pasta with this dish, uh, as I've said, because I just like the way it coats the strands. But, you know, if you have a really interesting um, <clears throat> shape that you love, go for it. I mean, it's, you know, it's your dish. Okay, so what should have happened in your Dutch oven or your skillet is that the pasta water should have pulled all that fond, which is the leftovers from the meat cooking on the bottom, should have pulled all of that up. And the bottom of your skillet should be pretty friggin' clean. I mean, you see how clean mine is? It pulled up everything. So all of that goodness is gonna go right into the sauce. So now my pasta is coated with the reserved uh, pancetta oil that was in there, about a tablespoon. And my pancetta is evenly distributed throughout my pasta. Now we're going to take our heat safe cup and we're going to get some pasta water. Now this is the really important thing. If you were to take these eggs the way they are and dump them into that pasta right now, you would end up with scrambled eggs, cheese, and bacon and not a sauce. So this is called tempering. So we're going to pour a little bit of hot liquid stirring constantly into our eggs so that we're warming the eggs up and helping to emulsify the cheese into the sauce. Okay? So it's now gonna look a lot thinner and your cheese should be melting. And now we're just gonna take our eggs, pour them in, and stir, 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 stir. Don't stop stirring. Just keep stirring because you want the heat from the pasta to finish melting the cheese and the stirring will help to uh, keep the eggs fluid as they cook because as they cook, they're going to get thicker. And yes, Marion, you used the, she used the water from the pasta. I used the water from the pasta. Because the starch from the pasta water is also going to help make the sauce thick and help it coat the strands. So now, just keep stirring until all of your strands are beautifully coated with that sauce. So it should look like that. See how glossy and pretty that is? And it's going to start absorbing the pasta. Remember we undercooked it by a minute or two. It's gonna start absorbing the liquid to finish its cooking process which will also help thicken up the sauce. Karen wants to know, how do you know how much water? Um, you know what? That's a great question I didn't tell you. I put in roughly a quarter cup of water, maybe a third. Um, if your sauce seems too thick, then you can take a little bit of that reserved pasta water and just dribble in a couple of tablespoons to get it fluid again. Thank you, Karen. That was a great question. I appreciate that. Um, I didn't tell you that, and I should have. I'm sorry. Now, I'm going to get a fork and taste this. We want to test it for salt. We want to make sure we've got enough cheese in there. Mmm! Holy crap, that's good! Lynn's doing the happy dance in her chair. 
because this is also one of her favorite dishes. Oh my God, that is delicious. Okay. So here's where we, here's where we can get fancy. Fancy just for you. Fancy is my sister's nickname. Um, Karen wants to know if there's a light under that skillet. A light? No, it's a, um, it's an induction burner. So, um, it only works when the pot is on it, so it doesn't get hot any other way. So what you want to do is grab your pasta. Now some people can twirl the tongs. I'm not good at twirling the tongs, so I twirl the plate. And it's still not that pretty. <laughs> I want to make sure that some pancetta gets into every serving. Um, how high of, of a temperature? I like started the pancetta off at medium high and dropped it down to medium low. And then once I started putting in the eggs, I did it over low heat. Here we go with plate number two. And like I said, I turn the plate because I can't do that. Marion said, delish, thank you. You are very welcome. So good, and my family's not home yet. I guess I have to eat it all. <laughs> well, Lynn and, I, whoops. Lynn and I are gonna eat this for a very late lunch. And there might be some left over for John when he gets home. Now you can always, um, oh, I totally forgot about the crushed pepper. I just told you I was going to do that. You, you can actually garnish with this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Or if you're watching this at a later time, it's not going to make any difference. Um, you put this in when you put the pasta into the pan. Uh, Samantha said, fave, I got here late, but I'll rewind. Okay. And then I just like to add a little bit extra because it's cheese and there's no such thing as too much cheese. Lynn, you want a little extra black pepper? Please. I do not. I like mine just the way it is. Fresh pepper. So um, I'm just going to hang out for another minute or two for the delay to catch up and ask you if you have any other questions. Holy crap, that's good. Yay! Thank you. That's for my lovely assistant. So I promise you that the next time we do this uh, with the split screen, that it will be better. Um, the internet in Nancy's house is dicey at best, I think, on some days. So um, she's moving into, <laughs> Lynn's eyes are rolling in the back of her head. Um, she's moving to a new joint, and hopefully the internet will be better there. Are there any questions? Shelly's jealous. Shelly's jealous? Shelly, you can make this. I just taught you how. It's super easy. It's all in the technique. The big trick is tempering the eggs. Because if you don't get the eggs to room temperature or a little bit warmer, you're just going to scramble them when they hit the pasta. That's the trick. That's what people don't, they, they think they know, but they don't know. She didn't make it, but the beauty of this is it will be online later. Yes. Um, so for those of you who did not cook today, you can actually find this recipe. It'll be up here on Facebook for, I don't know, 24 hours or so. But then it's going to be moved over to YouTube. So you can find all the Quarantine Kitchen videos at YouTube, at Good for Spooning. And please, subscribe. Because what, if you miss a video... When I post a new one on YouTube, you'll get an email that'll say, hey, good for spooning, out of a new video, and you can watch it whenever you have time. The other thing is, follow me on Instagram. If Obviously, you're already following me on Facebook because you got this information. Um, and 
actually subscribe to my blog if you get a chance because I started writing again. Lo and behold, um, it's took me it's taken me a while. Um, so Shelly said she's going to tell Leon to make it. She's going to tell Leon to make it. And Samantha says, "Do you tell us your fave eggs and cheese?" Um, the eggs, actually, I said earlier, are from Desert Bloom, the local co-op. But you know, any good quality fresh egg will do. Um, the cheeses, I'm using um, Costco Parmesan, believe it or not. And I don't know what brand of Pecorino it is, but it's Pecorino Romano. <coughs> Um, I don't know what particular brand it is. And Becca says, I'm in love with your fish spoon holder. Where's that from? Uh, thanks, Becca. Okay, so this isn't really a spoon holder. For those of you who are in the know, this is actually a tiki mug. <laughs> it's uh, from a drink, and it's actually a piranha. Um, the drink is called the piranha. And when Disneyland reopens, you can go to a bar, uh, one of the few like alcohol-friendly places on all of Disney's properties, and it's called Trader Sam's. And you can buy your drinks and buy your mugs to go home. And every time we go, I get um, a different tiki mug. I have a couple of different ones. This one is... Uh, my current favorite. It even says, I'm, I'm going to try and get it up close. Um, it even says Trader Sam's and Disney on the bottom. Mm -hmm. But this is one of them. Then there's another, oh, I might have moved in. There's another one laying around here somewhere. Um, it looks like a, a tiki guy with these big ass ears. Uh, there's skulls. There's all kinds of stuff. So um, these, I don't know where I moved them to, but these around. But yeah, so when you go, and a lot of tiki bars, not just Trader Sam's, but a lot of tiki bars across the country have really cool mugs like this. And when you order the drink, you can choose to get the souvenir mug or not. And that's where that's from. What other questions? That was a good question. She just said, I'm blown away. <laughs> by the mug or by the dish? I'm not sure. <laughs> or by my hair, which is really, I'm having a good hair day today. And Samantha gets those eggs from mm -hmm. Desert Bowl. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's it you guys now you know how to make carbonara like a pro now to tell you how easy this is if you follow it along I have not made proper carbonara like this in five years and I've never had this I've only had the poached steak on top I've only had that one mm -hmm. the bastardization Right. right. Yeah. No, I haven't made proper carbonara in five years, and I still was able to do it live with no practice in front of all of you. So I know you can accomplish this in your house. So Nancy and I will talk about what our next demo is going to be. I really think it should be a souffle. And um, so that way, what I can teach you is you can make carbonara one night, and then use your leftover egg whites the following night. So have a great rest of your week. Thank you for watching. Follow along on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and subscribe to my blog. And if you've got questions, just you know, put them in the comments. I will get to all of them, I promise.